Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. I'm Richard Fields. On the program today, John Cameron, Lee Welter, James Just, and the uh, Riviera City or Beach, Florida City Council has paid ransomware. $600,000, not chump change in ransomware because some hackers took over the city's, uh, I guess, uh, uh, not quite well enough protected software. Uh, James or John, what do you think about all that? Well, I, I think is uh, I'm going to enjoy cashing that check. Um, <laughs> no, I, it, this is a, man, this is tough because you have, unfortunately, you have people in, um, in smaller government agencies that, you know, these systems are archaic and they're not well designed and they're, they're, uh, their security is lacking and they're late on updates and all the rest of that. And, and a lot of times because they pay people in-house to create these systems and, you know, somebody's cousin's kid gets hired because he, you know, is a great gamer. And, and, you know, I mean, you look at in the state of California, have they, what did they spend, $120 million on a, on a computer system for the DMV that didn't work? I mean, it's just, it's crazy stuff. So, um, uh, this is not just, there's been some insurance companies that have been hit, uh, but um, generally what happens is people will engage, these cities or some, somebody will <coughs> engage uh, in a, an organization to, to uh, fight the ransomware. And, and what's not that well known is what these companies do many times is they actually pay the ransom. They buy the people off. You think that could have been an inside job? Well, you know, there's some there's some thought, and I'm not going to name any names of the uh, security software uh, that that people have, but but it's kind of common knowledge that uh, some of these uh, software security programs that we load in our computer are designed have, in countries that aren't very friendly to us. Well, and then, and and there's a rumor that they have hackers working for them that create the viruses that they prevent. So. Um, I'm not saying that's yes, true, but that's what I've heard, and I know an awful lot of programmers. Uh, I work from coffee houses, and and you know there, there's no reason for them to just make this stuff. But well, there is because it's fun to talk about. But it's a problem. It's going to be a, a worse problem going forward because, um, you know, it's proven that it works. Uh, ransomware is is. Uh, is getting more and more and more complex, just like all the other software viruses out there, the Trojan horses and, and everything else. The uh, programming is at such an esoteric level because the, of, of the, the computing speed that's out there, the amount of memory that's out there, um, the cloud and all the rest of that. A lot of organizations um, are, are putting very sensitive data on the cloud. and. Um, and all my friends say to load my pictures on the cloud, load my files on the cloud, and get them off my computer, on my phone. And, you know, I'm, I'm just call me old fashioned, but that's a little scary to me. I know when I back up to a hard drive that I hide somewhere in my house that the only, only me and wherever I forgot that I put it <laughs> knows where it is. So um, I think. Well, I, this I, use, I use Kodak and a, and a photo album. Do you? Yeah, no. That's one way to do it. <laughs> At the they still have those. So I believe in this particular case, James, I think you're, you're mm -hmm. up on it as well. Um, yeah. Didn't they actually, the, the firm they hired actually paid off the hackers? Yeah, they actually paid off the hackers. But again, it goes back to just the most basic security. Someone clicked a link yeah. and downloaded the Trojan and it infected the whole city. And they lost all their 911s. They lost all kinds of systems because somebody clicked a link that, you know, you go back to John Podesta, he clicked a link and then the whole Hillary emails get hacked by the, by the, by the Russians. So it's again, it's just basic security services. Don't go to places that you, you shouldn't go to. Don't click links that you don't know where they come from. You know, some of the most basic security things can actually prevent this. In my company, we're, we're being fished on a regular basis now. And the, the uh, phishing email looks like it's the president, president of Pacific Legal Foundation. And, you know, we've got, we've got some pretty good people working for us and they're all over it. And, and, uh, you know, but maybe somebody knew. Yeah, well, then it goes back to the city and, and training yeah. programs and making yeah. sure that, say, hey, look, make sure you don't click the wrong links. You know, in these little small city governments, you know they don't have proper training programs to remind people to go through the... We don't do that even in business as well, you know, where you go through and say, hey, let's make sure we follow proper security procedures. Well, now that now the, 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 the software behind these viruses is so sneaky, you could click on... You could copy a picture and send it to someone 
and, and have a little bit of code buried behind that picture well, that, that you're not even aware yeah, of, and, and all of a sudden, bang. So I, th I think it's going to happen more and more, and unfortunately, uh, you know, it's just like companies being sued by people. A lot of companies make the choice that they're going to settle mm -hmm. because it costs so much to take them to court. There are other companies that say, we never settle. If you want to get money from us, you're going to have to spend a million dollars to take us to court. And if you get 10, fine, but it's going to, it's going to make sure that other people who, who, who try to extort money from us have to go through the same hoop. So kind of the same thing. And it's, uh, it's unfortunate, but uh, if you rely on data, then the person who's better at it than you are is going to have the advantage. Another factor uh, dates back to the inception of the Internet and the explosion of the World Wide Web when an expert at the time said, despite this tremendous increase in graduates of computer science degrees, the number of competent programmers has remained pretty much the same. In other yeah. words, there are some people have a knack, a talent for it, and then there are others that don't. And well, you, you know that George Gilder, the guy that predicted the success of the internet back in about 1990, yes. is now predicting that Google will die and that encryption, that the cryptocurrency, uh, the crypto model will, will take over, and that, that's the wave of the future. Okay. Well, again, Google's on its deathbed. It's just a matter of, it, like Sears, it's going to take a long time for it to mm -hmm. completely end. Well, and, and if, you get, if you keep getting, um, what's the word, I'm edited, searches yeah. which which I I don't even use uh, Google anymore there's a little thing called duckduckgo yeah. yeah that um, yeah Google no longer go. gives you organic results it gives no. you the results you they want you to see not the results you're looking yeah. for and and if you're you know the whole idea of of a search engine is to provide you with what you're trying to find not what they want you to find so it's not getting any better is it no not at all. There's a there's testimony going on at the uh, House Judiciary uh, a House Judiciary Subcommittee on reparations and uh, Quillette writer Coleman Hughes he's a black guy uh, was testifying and not in favor of reparations he got booed why James well as a, for full disclosure I have an interracial family and so when I have these kind of discussions about reparation I have to go well are my children are the oppressors or the oppressed. Have they been? Uh, are they victims, or are they, you know, are they the oppressors? Because it, it it matters. It at the end of the day, it it matters where we draw these lines. Who are the oppressions? Who are the oppressors? And at some point, you have to understand. In order to move past it, we have to actually move past it. And reparations isn't going to help move past it. It's actually going to make things worse. Well, it doesn't this? It seems to me that you're you know sort of like saying, uh, my my grandfather. Uh, was wronged by your grandfather, therefore you're going to pay. Uh, yeah, I mean, and they have they have a point. There's there's some long term historical discussion has historical issues that need to be discussed, and we don't discuss them properly. And so there are points to be made. But at the same time, I was just reading about in San Francisco they want to remove a mural of George Washington that depicts history accurately. It's it shows him as owning slaves, and it shows him as as it has Indians have been murdered and there's people walking over them. It actually shows the whole kind of historical accuracy of it, but now they want to remove it because it's been problematic. And it was problematic because... Uh, it displays history accurately and people might be have offended have by it. They might believe some of that truth. Huh? Yeah, they might believe some of the truth. You, you know, they're, they're Native American and, and black students shouldn't have to look at that every day, despite the fact that it's actually teaching them about real history. The real history that they're saying we refuse to discuss, they want to hide because it might hurt somebody's feelings. It, it doesn't even make any sense anymore. And well, don't, so, don't get me started on microaggressions. <laughs> the fact that you have to protect people. I'm feeling microaggressive right now, I gotta tell you. Because, yeah, so, so oh, none wait, of the stuff. No, no, I'm not. Speaking of aggression, I'm a rational human I took being. a different tack. I, by happenstance, maybe because of voter registrations, I got a, um, a, in the mail an invitation to join to become a member of Judicial Watch, which is similar to Pacific Legal Foundation. Not at all, but we'll discuss that off but, but, but that's yeah. they're, they're different. Yeah, but, a bit different, but go on. But, but protecting citizens from their government, in other words. And uh, I said, I don't think the taxpayers nor government debt should pay for reparations. I said the people who are responsible should. There is one political party that historically, according to my reading, was supported slavery, supported the Jim Crow laws, uh, used the 
KKK as their enforcement arm, and then later initiated the income tax and the Federal Reserve System, and then the Ponzi scheme that came from the, 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 the New Deal with Franklin Roosevelt, and then the Great Society, which is Degraded Culture uh, by Linda Johnson, said, why don't we have a class action suit against that group of people who have done all this harm? Because you don't have harm. standing. You, don't have, you can't sue them because you don't have standing. Well, I just want to see us actually start to move forward. And at the moment, all these things designed, the reparation discussion and Donald Trump, they're all using race as a, as a dividing tool to keep us divided. And so, and so it's... They're not actually designed to make us move forward, and so that's really what upsets me about this whole thing. But if I get your point correctly, Lee, yes. you are saying that the party of James Eastland and Herman Tal Talmadge and the guy that got along so collegially <laughs> with them, Joe Biden, is who should be paying for uh, the reparations. Is that, is that what you're saying? Well, in short, they're doing whatever works best for them. They are not unselfish, altruistic people. Well, you can't... You it's can't, hard to find them, isn't it? Except you, here on our panel. You can't, have, <laughs> you can't have a job helping people unless you create a class of people who need help. And that's unfortunately what's happened. If, if you have an unintended, unintended consequence to a government program that is, that is proven to do just the exact opposite of what you say the program's supposed to do, for the last 50 years, then it's no longer an unintended consequence. It's what you want to happen, which is the destruction of the nuclear family in poor people throughout this country and creating single female heads of household. And these, that's what these programs do. So somebody needs to change this stuff. Well, I tell you, one, right. we one, need one, family, one family that absolutely needs help is the, the family uh, corporation that owns the, uh, the Trump hotels and uh, one way of uh, doing that is through emoluments uh, which is uh, all of the people who would like to curry favor with the uh, Trump administration well stay in the Trump hotels at a uh, inflated rate undoubtedly uh, and and this is a, this is a you know part of the Constitution the emoluments clause along with uh, uh, subpoena stonewalling is, is an issue that's working its way up through the court system now one of the things that Trump has done a fairly good job of is picking justices for the Supreme Court and for the uh, uh, court, appellate courts. Will that come back to bite him? Will Neil Gorsuch say on the Emoluments Clause that Trump has a problem? James? Well, the Emoluments Clause is pretty interesting because if you go back in history and look at George Washington, he was the richest man in, 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 in the country at the time. And so it's, it makes it hard to, you know, where people who buy his whiskey were the were they, you know, trying to get curry favor with George Washington? So this is maybe a question a lawyer might be better to answer than, than for me, because I'm a more of a historian over on this thing. Well, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not an attorney, and I, 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 because uh, I have no belly scales, I would show you, but I'm wearing a T-shirt. That's my little attorney joke. Um, so if you're gonna, if you're gonna bring up the emoluments clause with uh, Donald Trump. Then shouldn't we have the, the be looking at uh, Hillary Clinton, basic, Hillary Clinton basically uh, selling appointments? Uranium rights. A set, well, no, I'm just selling appointments at when she was uh, Secretary of State. You know, the people who got appointments for Clinton Foundation. For Clinton Foundation. Kind of Clinton Foundation. Sort of and in and it's uh, if that Clinton Foundation was such a great thing, why is it basically out of business now? Then when she can no longer you know sell favors. So you know you can you can make the case that uh, if if people who stay at, at uh, a Trump hotel uh, pay a higher than rack rate, and and after that somebody can prove uh, a, a chain of evidence that say somehow got a defense contract or they got an appointment or their kid got into Harvard, well, wait a second, that's a whole different story. <laughs> then, you know, fine, go after them. But you know, subpoena st stonewalling. I mean, because somebody's a, business that he's not. She's not directly managing right now, yeah, I no. presume. And it, and it doesn't matter anyway. I mean, his business is as big as, you know, his is. Not as big as he says it is, of course, but <laughs> um, that, that's a whole other dirty joke I can't say on no. TV. Um, you know, you, you can, the, the appearance of conflict of interest is, you can draw it any way you want, and, and it mostly depends on what's your viewpoint. I, I would certainly say that... Um, 
you know, if they're gonna if they're gonna put target Trump for that, then they should go back and and uh, put Hillary and, and and Bill in prison. And as far as the stonewalling, there's a, a body of law out there that that you know flat out says some attorneys will say, maybe it's their political bias that that uh, um, <coughs> Congress doesn't have the right to try to subpoena these people, uh, and that that. Uh, the president can tell him because he's asked whenever he wants to. So it really just depends on who's attorney. Now, as far as the appointees will rule, well, this could be a catch-22 for him because um, uh, the president has done a very good job in having some, some great legal minds uh, help him pick who's on these courts. And these are folks who read the Constitution, don't try to rewrite it, and they're going to follow it. I mean, these are Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts that are getting these positions. And they're being, you know, tortured to death in every Senate hearing. But um, if he did it, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna read the law the way it's it's written, not the way he wants it to be written. I'll guarantee that. I'll guarantee that. So you're saying that uh, selling a night in the Lincoln bedroom is on a par with somebody paying hotel rates? You know. Who's? Well, I think uh, uh, one of my favorite actors, uh, Kevin Costner, stayed in in. Uh, uh, don't you usually have to write about a hundred thousand dollar check to stay in the Lincoln? I haven't bedroom? done that recently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Richard, when you stayed in the Lincoln <laughs> bedroom, I stayed in the Lincoln cabin, but it was torn down at the time I stayed there. So. Yeah. Right after you left, they tore it down. Yeah. But back yeah. then, you you just paid a barrel of whiskey. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Back in the old days. Yeah. Or the ethics of a. Uh, uh, a presidential tuple that left the White House with hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of furniture and other and gifts other that they just made it in the moving truck back to Arkansas. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't see. But how the Democratic Party, the Democratic Party is cleaning up their act. They don't like Bernie Sanders because he sounds too much like Mao or Lenin. Uh, they don't like, uh, you know, they don't like uh, Joe Biden Lennon because or? he's he's too friendly with James Eastland and Herman Talmadge. But they're beginning to like. Uh, Elizabeth Warren, because she has a plan, right, Lee? Uh, For I, everything. I, well, I wonder which. We're that's, that's, solve that's, every that's, that's, that's the uh, you special that's the interest drop. group. We're going to solve your problems. You special interest group. We're going to solve your problems. Yes, we're going <laughs> to solve every problem. And one of the problems is the cost of college. What is Elizabeth Warren getting paid as a professor for teaching one class? Does anybody remember? I don't know that I ever knew, but I'd be interested. It, it was outrageous, but I don't remember the number, yeah, but it was like 300 and something. Or, yeah. Somewhere in there. And range. I could be wrong, but it was, it was, totally it was six figures line with for one class. Yes, it was six figures for one class. It brings to mind. Um, but, she uh, has she, lots of, but she has lots of office time, I'm sure. Was, was, that, yeah. was that a class in how to be a grifter? I do not know, but uh, uh, von Mises uh, published an article called The Anti-Capitalistic Mentality. And he, he poses the question, why is it that um, some individuals want government to be in control of higher education? He said, because they can get paid well if government is choosing to support them. But in the free market, nobody would value them that, that high. In a free market, We'd probably have everybody going to the Khan Academy for their education and then getting the educational testing system to validate that they've learned what they claim that they have learned. That would be a lot less expensive and probably probably more effective than, than what we're dealing with now. Well, I mean, you look at the, look at homeschooling. Pay kids that that what statistically Terrific. home homeschooled kids do statistically what a, a whole a order of magnitude better in the in the bell-shaped distribution than people who go to public schools I have an example a uh, young girl was homeschooled at home by her mom until mom decided that she could go to the elementary the public elementary school that his, her cousins attended they said well we'll put you in second grade by the end of the second grade she came home and told dad Dad, I tested at the 10th grade reading level. I can read anything I want to read. I have an even more personal example. Good. When I was uh, in uh, junior high school, uh, learning math from the high school football coach, 
<laughs> I was learning absolutely nothing. When I got to college uh, and absolutely had to pass calculus in order to uh, get my degree, I went to the library and found something that was a precursor of the internet. It was a, a, a slideshow interac interactive uh, th thing where you could go back and, yeah, where you could go back, you could, you know, read some text, try to answer some questions. If you got them wrong, go back and read the text over again. And basically... A tutorial. A tutorial, yeah. And I was able to actually teach myself trigonometry, teach myself uh, calculus well enough to get an A in the course and actually, gra actually graduate. No teachers involved, just uh, what would now be a, a simple uh, computer program. Yes, I like that. Well, to get back to the politics of it, oh, I'm not politics. entirely. I'm not entirely sure that, that <laughs> I'm not entirely sure that the, you know we could trust the media to be telling us that the Democratic Party is honestly trying to move towards Warren against Bernie Sanders. They they rigged the system against him last time. Why wouldn't they be rigging it this time? That's a good well, I, I I think they probably are <laughs> for the simple reason that Bernie Sanders is a little bit scarier than Elizabeth Warren. He stands uh, up there and claims he's a democratic socialist. Yes, well, she comes up with you know and with pretend a, she's a, not, a, which sweet, is sweet, pretend she's not, and, and, and she and, is, and, is she is, is, is but but she but she so, yeah, but she doesn't sound a socialist, and that's what the centrists are looking for: somebody that, that puts a, a clean face. On their evil socialism. So it doesn't sound like they really are. In, in fact, if somebody claims uh, to have Native American DNA, and yeah, it's that's, one that's, part yeah, in a thousand, move on, move on. That's that's yeah, we that's, can't that's talk all, about all, those things. Yeah, those yeah, distortions. Well, she has enough uh, acidic policy proposals that we don't even need to talk about her. Yeah, her, I mean, you just talk about uh, talk about the fact that she wants to, you know, just talk about Medicare for all. That enough. That's enough right there. I mean, Medicare for all. We have Medicare right now, which is going broke, even though old people like me are paying in, and young people like you are also paying in. Thank you very much. It's still going You're broke. Wrong. It's still going broke. You're on the other side of that. Of that uh, it's still going broke, and now we want to do it for everybody. There's nobody left There's to say yes. Even worse. Do you want to put politicians in charge of your medical care? I sure, that's the last thing I, I don't ever want my, want to do. I don't want to go to the VA for my heart surgery. Thank you very much. Well, no. some of them are very good, but they're extremely inefficient. <laughs> New York Governor I'm Cuomo sure. has reached a proposed deal with New York legislators to reduce New York carbon emissions by 85% by 2050, and the remaining 15% will be offset by carbon credits. There will be a, a new Climate Action Council to enforce all of this. Kind of sounds like the California EPA to me. Is that, is that accurate, John? Gosh, I hope not. Um, well, I think the, the part of the news story that's missing is the wall that they're going to build around <laughs> the state of New York to the stratosphere so that whatever New York does will actually be independent of prevailing winds. Um, kind of the same problem we got here in California. Um, and, and no matter what New York does, it's uh, going to have about 1% of the effect that uh, the People's Republic of China, the great polluter, will have on, on global, uh, say, I guess it's CO2 carbon that they're worried about. Um, and, you know, I would think with the, with the monitor minimum happening here over the next few years and a little ice age coming up, that they would want more carbon, not less, but that's just me. So I think it's ridiculous. It's all ridiculous. It's basically, um, you know, preaching to the environmental choir. It's uh, uh, going to allow for a lot of government bureaucrats who are, are untouchable to uh, hand favors out to people, special tax treatment, the same kind of stuff. That's and have ruining. a high paid sinecure for, for, for life. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and once this, this thing is created, you know, once it becomes an official government body in New York, you're never going to be able to fire the people. They're going to have the same kind of out crazy, outrageous benefits that the people in the, the $300 million EPA tower with the ported marble and copper uh, downspouts and, and a, a, uh, a monument in the... Uh, I mean, the, the place is a palace. Maybe not on the inside, but, uh, you know, I don't know what the carbon offset for that place should have been, but it's the, it's the same kind of thing. It's ridiculous. The idea that that one this one thing we will admit, no matter what side of the the climate argument are on, is that the 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 there aren't any walls to the stratosphere uh, that will block 
what countries like China are doing, which are you know saying that they're cutting back on on carbon and building a new coal-fired power plant, what, every four weeks or something? Yeah, of course, I mean, you're, you're now you're talking about a different issue, which is the issue of neighborhood effects, and that's really yeah. a separate issue. But, but nevertheless, uh, whenever you hear anybody say the science is settled, there is you, no such you, thing as you, subtle you science. Know, you know they have absolutely, they're either lying through their teeth or have no idea what they're talking about because science is never settled. There was a, you, you, always have, gravity, you, you always have the speed a, of light. You always have a hypothesis that needs to be disproven. And the hypothesis is always subject to being disproved. The hypothesis the now that the, is that carbon is a problem. 20, 30, you know, 50 years ago, the problem was that the Earth was cooling. A different hypothesis it obviously got proved wrong. There was a time that when the Earth was the center of the universe, yeah. and it was a flat yeah. Earth at that, yeah. and people believed it. Well, it was a and religious. And there's still people on Facebook that believe it today. So it was a religious. <laughs> and it's always the same it's solution. Like, it's always higher taxes, more government programs, and more power to the centralized. Control. The Green New Deal. If you actually look at the Green New Deal, 85, 90 percent of it was about a higher minimum wage, it was about Medicare for all, it was, about, it was a grab bag of everything the left wants government to do for them. It had nothing to do with climate, or very little. Yeah, so, I mean, I know. view that, uh, that this yeah. uh, climate change uh, is a government established religion. I refer to it as the cult of anthropogenic climate alteration. <laughs> and, I like that. What, is there an acronym we can come up with? Well, oh, there's more. There's more uh, candidates than Elizabeth Warren. What do you think about MSNBC giving, uh, getting exclusive rights to the South, Car South Carolina Democratic Convention in exchange for agreeing to broadcast all 21 blowhard speeches from the Democratic candidates, James? Well, the ratings can't get much lower, so I suppose why not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the exclusive rights seems kind of strange that you only want them to go to. MSNBC, which is the lowest rated news show except for Rachel Maddow's show, I think. Everybody That's not else, MSNBC. Every, everybody else is... That's is a, that is MSNBC. Yeah, yeah. Everybody else is low, right? Everybody else has the lowest rated network except for that one show. So I'm not entirely sure why you would want exclusive rights on that Well, maybe one. they just want to give them the attention they deserve. Sure. Well, they're having Joy Reid and, and the Rav Rundell Sharpton uh, do call, uh, gavel to gavel coverage. That yeah, it's, just one those, it's one of those things. And they've upset, they've upset their uh, other networks and the black owned media. And so they've got a bunch of people upset at them because they've decided to go this exclusive route. And I don't under, it doesn't make any sense. That's the show. We'll see you again next week. Same time, same place. Libertarian Counterpoint on the web at www.access. Sacramento.org on uh, Channel 17 in Sacramento uh, and on, uh, let's see here, YouTube and uh, other cable channels all over the place. Thank you very much for being part of the show. Well, thank you, Richard. We'll see you again yes. next week, whether you want to or not. We'll be here. Look forward to it. <laughs> you sure?